So I'm driving home uh, in this California traffic. Driving home from work. In California, you're going to always have traffic. So I was driving home and I was thinking about all the opportunities uh, for low-income people uh, to get an education. Now, I have uh, acquired a lot of knowledge about this through other people telling me things. And I, what, I've what I'm realizing is, obviously, the information is not getting to the people that actually need it. So I'm just going to talk about some of the things that I found out and how I found out uh, when it comes to education for low-income people. Now, when I first got to California, it was January 2001. I signed in on my military base January 2001. And so a lot of the people on the base were telling me about you know, the California Community College system. And they were saying that the tuition this is in uh, January 2001, was $7 a unit. And I'm like, wow, I've never heard of such, you know, low tuition. And at the time, I didn't have an undergraduate degree, and I was getting ready to start go going back to school uh, and get my degree. So uh, now myself, I, being in the military, I, did, I had uh, tuition assistance. You know, military people have a lot of benefits to go back to school, you know, if you want to go back to school or whatever. So... Anyway, so I go, uh, when I finally decided to go, school was like what, September uh, of that same year. So September, I think 2001 is when I finally went over to the community college. Because, you know, I figured, hey, go to community college for, to get a two-year degree from there and then go on to the university. And that's, you know, that's a good thing to do, I think. So when I go to register, uh, they asked me, you know, are you a single parent? Okay. And I said, no, whatever. Uh, we were on semesters. And so the next time I went to pay my fees, because I paid my fees the first time they asked me, are oh, you a single parent? And, you know, no. Uh, next semester, I go to pay my fees, and they say they asked, are you a single parent? And I'm like, no. So the next time I went to pay my fees, you know, I kind of got uh, ticked off because I thought that they were trying to uh, stereotype me, you know. So I'm thinking, okay, now, so I asked a little girl behind the counter. He was one of the students. They, you know, they were working there. It's probably like work study or whatever. There was their job, and they were also attending the community college. So I asked that little girl, I said, how come every time I come in here to pay my fees, someone asks me, I keep getting asked, am I a single parent? She says, ma'am, by law, we have to ask you that because... Uh, we have something called the California Board of Governors, and it is a uh, pot of money that's set aside. That and, and if you are a single parent, you automatically get your fees waived. Now, this is in addition to a Pell Grant. This money is different from the Pell Grant. And so, what this is 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 they pay all your fees are waived. Okay, but not only that, your books, because that's where the money is. You know, you pay a lot of money for books at, at, at the universities or in the community colleges. It, you, they give you a, a voucher for your books. So now, if you are a single parent, uh, you get these your fees waived in the California community uh, colleges. This is just California. This is in addition to the Pell Grant. Now, we're not even talking about the Pell Grant. This is additional money. Uh, you get your fees waived, and then they give you an, a voucher. So what you do is when you go to the bookstore, school bookstore, you go get all your books. When you go up to the counter, instead of handing over the cash, you hand them a voucher. And it's called the California P Promise Grant. Now, it used to be called the Board of Governors Fee Waiver, but they've changed the name. It's the same thing because I did some research today to make sure it was still in effect. And it is, and it, but it's called the California P Promise Grant. So I'm like, wow, this is good stuff. Now, of course, I didn't need any of it. I didn't qualify for any of it, didn't need any of it, but it was good to know. But the thing about it, you know, I was like, okay, I'm getting all this information, but I don't have anyone to give it to because everybody that I was in association with, associated with, were other military people. So anyway, but I, I kept this in the back of my mind. One year, I was sitting uh, in biology lab beside this little girl. And I'm calling them little girls because 
these these were kids under me. I was like in my uh, early 30s at that time. So anybody that's 19, 20, 21 was just like kids to me. So I was sitting beside this little girl in the biology lab. It's a little black girl. And she says, she told me she had a two-year-old child. She says, my son, listen to this. My son is in the daycare center here on the campus. And they pay for it for me. So she's getting free child care. And she got that under the uh, child care access uh, pro parent in school program. This is under the Pell Grant. Child care access parent in school program. That's additional money in, from the Pell Grant for single parents. And while the, this allows the parent, this is for low income families and single parents. That could be a man as well. Some, some men have single parents. That's the Pell Grant will pay for you to go to college and then they will pay for your child care. So, and I'm telling you all of this because I want this to get out to people. I want people to know what benefits they have. Okay, so you have the Pell Grant itself. Okay, I'm just going to reiterate the Pell Grant itself. That's nationwide. In California, if you are, uh, if you attend any California community college, you can also get an additional money called the, um, California Promise Grant fee waiver if you're a single parent and they also give you an, a voucher to pay for your books now I've seen the voucher in effect as well because when I used to go to the community college and I used to get my books you know and that one day it was a lady in front of me in line and she was a foreigner she wasn't Hispanic she didn't speak any English and the reason I said she was a lady she was older than me now she's probably the age I am now because at that time I was in my early 30s. She's probably an old lady like I am now. Because I was like, look at this old lady. And she couldn't even speak English at all. And she wasn't Hispanic. I, maybe uh, maybe Russia or something. It was one of those languages. She got up to the counter with all those books. And she handed them. When they rung her up, she handed them the voucher. So, I'm, so I know this is in effect. So you have that. So, um... I was like, you know, who can I tell all this to? I never was in contact with anybody else that I could give this information to. Let's fast forward to 2003. February of 2003, my unit was called up to go to Iraq. That's when the war started. And uh, I had to pull out of school as well and because we're getting ready to go to war. And I needed to get, <laughs> we were going to the war zone, to the desert, and I was not going to be able to do my hair. So I decided, I said, I'm going to get some braids. I had never gotten braids before. But I said, I need, because I'm not going to be able to take care of my hair. We're going to be in the desert. So someone said, why don't you go to this braid shop? So I go to this braid shop, and I call them making the appointment. And they say, it's going to take all day. Because it's just getting these individual ones. They was gonna, it was going to take all day. So I took a book with me, and I told my first sergeant, I said, I'm not leaving this country till I get my hair done. And this was the day before we pulled out. So anyway, so I go to the braid shop. So I'm sitting in, in my chair, and you know my, my braid is braiding my hair directly in front of me is another someone in a chair and the girl is braiding that person's hair well that girl who was doing who was braiding the hair of the other person she went on this rant she started talking about how she didn't have enough money to pay something happened to her car and she couldn't uh, pay for that and then she started talking about the rich need to pay spread the wealth around you know I need some of this money and they need to give me some you know she that, that rant about it's somebody else's fault so I'm sitting there with my book and I'm trying to stay out of this discussion. I am try I tried my best, but she kept going on and on about how so everybody owes her or something. Because, I see, braiders, I don't think they have to have any kind of license. She wasn't a hairstylist where she had gone to school and gotten a license. I think you can just braid and not have, I don't know. So I knew she didn't have any license. So I started telling her about it. I said, well, why don't you go to school and get, you know, and get some kind of a formal education? She said, I can't afford to go to school and blah, blah, blah. She was saying all that. I said, but yes, you can. So I started telling her about the Board of Governors waiver at the community college. Well, she didn't like that. She kind of got mad with that. She said, so she says, well, you know, what about the books? So she thought she thought uh, she had another excuse. She says, what about the books? Those books are, are expensive from what I heard. I said, but they have a, 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 a voucher. I said, they even give you a voucher and you can pay for your books. When I told her that, she got so angry with me. Because the reason she got angry is because I took away her excuses. Because she was just looking for an excuse. And when I gave her all the all this information, she didn't like it. But I just wanted to get this out because I want people to know what's going on. I want poor people, low-income people, to take advantage of these uh, opportunities. 
Um, and that is why I think a lot of people are going around hollering free education. We need free education. Now, this doesn't help middle class kids. I realize that. But I'm concerned about the low income because if we want to get people, and these are grants, these are a free, this is free money. This is nothing that you have to pay back. This is free money. I want people to know what they have access to because see, America is, I don't care who gets angry, America is the greatest country in the world and if you can't make it in America, you can't make it anywhere. If anybody wants to be a success, this is the country to be in. So if you are living uh, in poverty, low income, you do not have to sit there and stay at McDonald's. You can, you can go to school and, and access all these benefits and get income. And see, one thing about the community colleges. Uh, you don't have everybody's not academia everybody's not some people they have trade schools there as well you can use this for the, the Pell Grant you can use for the same thing and they may have a, a, additional money in other states at the, uh, at the uh, community college level something like what they have here in California this promise uh, California promise grant but even if they don't have that they still have the Pell Grant but you can take that Pell Grant and you can do other things if you don't want to be over on the academic uh, academic side you can be over on the um, the uh, other side, vocational side. I used to go to school because I said I went to school at night, and I most of the time I'd still be in my uniform because my class was like six to nine. So I'd get off get off work about five, you know, didn't have time sometimes to go home and change. And I'd go to the like the student center and I'd see these kids and I'd say, what, what are you doing? What what's, what are you majoring in? They were some of these kids were over on the vocational side, and they were doing what the computer graphics. One of the guy told me he says I am doing computer graphics. I said what is that? He said well you know how those video games, all those videos. He's learning how to do all the graphics for that. We had heating and air conditioner, electronics, uh, cosmetology, uh, you name it, uh, plumbing. Those jobs make good money. Do you know how much money plumbers make? Do you know how much money electricians make? Now, I was a guy in my unit who, uh, uh, he was an electrician. He had gone to school to get his certifications. And he used to tell me, he says, on weekends, once he got his certification, he would contract himself out. He would get contract jobs because he could do it. And he would make over way over $100 an hour. And he got so angry because we got called up for Iraq. When we got called up for Iraq, he said, you know how much money I just lost? That guy had to go to Iraq and I'm losing all this money. So, uh, but when we got back from Iraq and, and when it was time for him to re-enlist, he just got out. You know, he said, because he says, and then he got, he, and he said he got this good job with this company where they, I guess it was some kind of construction company or whatever. He was making good money. And then he was still contracting himself out on jobs on the weekend because he had his own certification. So what I'm saying is, Whatever you want to do, you can use this Pell Grant money for that. Now, I just want to talk right now to low-income black people. I just want to say this to you. It is not your fault that you were born into that situation. You might have been born into a single a parent home uh, living in the inner city. But it is your problem now that if you are an adult now you don't have to remain in that situation that's what I'm saying it was what it wasn't your fault that you were born into it but if you remain into it in that situation and then you're running around here angry and you're angry at the wrong people you know instead of all that anger you have for white America white supremacy and all this thing let that go and then work on yourself let that go that's not going to do you any good to be angry at all these people who have nothing to do with your situation, even though it's what you're being told. I want you to go to school and do something with your lives. You could become millionaires. Just by, do you know how much opportunity that you can uh, do? All the things you can do with just getting a... And so this is free money given to you. You can get a, all the way up to a bachelor's degree, undergrad. You can't get a, a master's with the Pell Grant. It's only for undergraduate. But what else would you need? Especially if you go and get some kind of vocational trade. And I, and I want to say something to the, the black young females. Or any young female. But I say the same thing. I tell my young nieces and great nieces the same thing. You need to start concentrating on you. If you are a young lady, whether you have a child or not, it's time for you to concentrate on you. You take advantage of any opportunity you have to get a good education. Do not concentrate on finding a good man. Yes, everybody wants a good man, but until you 
get yourself in a situation where you can take care of you, you and your child. That's what you need to focus on. Don't let anybody distract you from anything else. Don't let anybody distract you from getting your education. And then after that, you get get your career. Don't let anybody distract you from that either. Once you get those two things taken care of, your education and your career, then, then you're set. You can always take care of yourself. No matter who comes and goes into your lives, you still can take care of you. Your life won't be up, uh, up, uprooted because somebody came and left. Somebody decided they didn't want you anymore. All of a sudden now you can't pay your rent. No, you will always be able to take care of you when you concentrate on you and your needs and the needs of your children. I just want to say that. And I want people to share this video simply because of this information. And I'm going to put the links to all these things in the description. But I also want to say this. See, a lot of times, you know, people just don't have knowledge. And I understand that. But a lot of times, people are passing by schools you know, on their way to work. Well, this is what I want to tell you to do. Stop in one of those schools. Any school. I don't care where it is. You walk in and you tell them, I want to make an appointment with the financial aid officer. I want to discuss financial aid. I want to go to school. And they will grab you and pull you in there. You know why? They will get you the money because this is government money. They need you. They need your behind to be sitting in those chairs. Because so this and the reason I'm saying that this is my last point because I almost forgot this. Now remember, you have to apply for remember this governor's promise grant I told you about? This governor it was called the Board of Governors fee fee waiver. Remember I told you about that? Okay. You have to apply for that through the FOSFA, which is F A S F A. That's how you get all your financial aid. FOSFA. I didn't apply for any of that because I didn't need it. I never applied for it. You remember when I asked the, like, the little girl, I said, how did he, how, what is this for? And she explained it to me. Okay, years later, like I said, I got pulled out and we went to Iraq. So I had to pull out of school. When I got back from Iraq and I started school again, I got a letter in the mail. And it said, now listen to this, it had awarded me this governor fee waiver thing. For, and I had three semesters uh that it had a war free. I didn't have to pay for it. And I didn't even need this. This is some poor person needed this. So I went to the school and asked them, why did you award me this? I didn't need it and I didn't apply for it. And you know what the answer was? Because they have this pot of money that they have to get rid of and nobody was applying for it. Nobody was applying for this money. So they just started giving it to people. And that's how I ended up with it. So I, I don't want uh, this money to go to waste. That's why I say if you go to any university, any school, any trade, anybody, if you pass a school on the way to work, you need to stop and go in there on the way back or something and say, I, say, I want to meet with the financial aid person and I want to discuss getting money for school. And trust me, they'll get you the money because they want you, they have this money, they have to use this money and they want you sitting in those chairs. Have a blessed day.